bought nine pallets of lost cargo and in these pallets i really hope to find the mind that i lost hey there folks and welcome back to the place that you thought that you would never end up in all of your life but here you are you finding yourself here in the pits of the entire world wide web and i'm certainly glad you made it here so thanks and if you're new to these depths i am an online reseller i've been doing this for about 12 years it's changed my life completely and i like to try and get other people to inspire them to at least give it a try for how much it has certainly changed my life. Hopefully you stick around and hang out with me as I dig through these pallets and hopefully find some real treasures. I'm excited. Hopefully you're excited. Wee, 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 so excited. So I just spent almost $5,000 on inventory. It's the most I've ever spent at one time. Boxes full of stuff just like this. These pallets are lost cargo pallets. So I've been buying lost cargo pallets for a little over five years, five to six years. And I usually buy three to four at a time, depending on the price. They happen to be pretty cheap this week. So that's how I ended up with nine. And nine is a lot. So this is what it looks like. Each of these pallets, they're just, they're just big. That's what she said. There's a thousand items. There's at least 500 to a thousand items in these things. I saw this on top. This particular item sells for like 125 bucks. This is the kind of stuff you see. Uh, this is what the top of the box looked like. That's what I was bidding on. And I won this box at $500. That's the minimum starting bid. Nobody else bid on this, which was a little strange because when you can see value on the top, that's always a good sign to, to start your bid. So uh, I was actually shocked. I won this for 500 bucks. Nobody else bid on it. And a lot of this stuff, you'll see this Garmin. This is really small. Uh, that's also what she said. And there's a lot of small stuff. A lot of the value in these boxes is, is just hidden below what, what's lurking below that top layer. And there are so many small things that really add up. It's the, the 20, 25, 30, 35, 50 dollar items that really make these boxes profitable. And I would say there's roughly 25 to 50 of those 25 to $50 items in almost every pallet. That would be like a, there's a standard or an average. And it's not always true, but there is always a few $100 plus items. And you've seen a few already in this particular box. I'm not going to go through every box with every item. Obviously, we would be here until we're all four years older. But uh, a lot of cool stuff, endless merch. Outside of just the financial implications, of buying nine pallets. There are a lot of pros and cons to buying this much inventory all at once. If you ever bought liquidation or lost cargo pallets or pallets of any kind, so if you have purchased large pallets of inventory in the past, let me know in the comments about your experience. And I want to talk about the pros and cons of my experience while also drinking iced coffee. And the amount of stuff I'm getting out of these nine pallets would be equivalent to many months, maybe two, maybe three months worth of garage sales and thrift stores. So it's a lot of stuff all at one time. And it's also a big financial investment all at one time. Normally that $5,000 I could spend over the course of say a month or two or three and now I'm doing it all within one week. So it's a lot of money tied up that I don't have to continue to go out and source new stuff until the stuff that comes from this pellets starts selling which is why it's also you play that game of balancing. I need to sort through all this stuff, get through it, but also have time to list it and it's a lot to deal with. It can be kind of overwhelming. And then there's the time investment. This takes a lot of time to get through all this stuff. Pallets, nine pallets worth of stuff. That's gonna take a full two days just to process and sort through. And I sort through in multiple different ways. Basically, I'm sorting into piles for what's gonna sell on eBay, what's gonna sell on Amazon, what I'm gonna take to a consignment store, what I'm going to take to a flea market or a garage sale of my own. And also the final pile, which is the biggest pile, is stuff that is just not valuable enough to do anything with or undesirable stuff. And I put that into a donation, which my friend who actually owns a thrift store, he buys that stuff from me. So this stuff here, this is an example. This stuff is what goes to my friend's thrift store. He buys all this stuff. And like I said, this is a good 80 to 85% of, of any individual box ends up going there. These buckets are my sorting system. I throw anything that is worth selling online in these. I further sort it again when I get home. But all this stuff set near the buckets is stuff that I'm determining the value of on the spot. Sometimes I make wrong decisions but that just happens comes with the territory this back table is set up where it's stuff that i think or does know that have uh, that has decent value but sometimes i still look stuff up just if i'm a little unsure uh, obviously these adidas sandals will be selling online 
And there's a lot of considerations because of the amount of stuff. So I, I'm never 100% consistent in the decisions, but uh, it's a lot of stuff that I just put back here that I'm not familiar with mostly. You can see those soccer balls. I ended up finding three. They're $50 a piece, so that, that's pretty cool. And these, these, you can see it takes three or four of us to go through these. This hat, my buddy missed. He threw, uh, assuming it didn't have much value, but I knew to take it out it was worth $90. And there's just so much. This is the treasure hunt just look how cool this is look at all that stuff and there's just so many treasures hidden within the chambers of these echoed hallways of this cardboard box just really uh, amazing stuff and it's so much fun these things i ended up finding about 30 of these uh roughly 30 of these or so and they sell for roughly 50 bucks uh, so that was a really good score simply safe i found a, a ton of simply safe again see it's all these small items that uh, really paying off big. So with these liquidation type pallets, basically you're bidding online and you're looking at just the top. You can't see anything past the top layer. So it's a, it's a bit of a gamble. It's kind of like storage unit auctions. If, if you've ever seen storage wars or perhaps you're just familiar with how storage unit auctions work, but they just take pictures outside of the unit. So you don't actually see what the entire unit is there could be a sasquatch back there which would explain why they're so tough to find out in the forest maybe they're just hanging out in the back of storage units so there's more risk inherently when you're buying these pallets because you just simply can't see 99 percent of the stuff that is in the box and when you're comparing that to going out to thrift stores and garage sales and flea markets and such you know what you're buying and you're basically cherry picking all the good stuff and leaving all the stuff that you don't want behind and based on my experience a good 80 to 85 percent of these particular liquidation pallets are usually things that don't bring in much value that you would never purchase if you're out in the wild. One of my favorite pros of doing this is it is a complete treasure hunt, the treasure hunting aspect. And speaking of random treasures, this poster, normally I discard posters into a flea market or donation pile, but this is really pretty. It was shiny. Never heard of this band, Ween, but this was a Red Rocks poster. I turned it over, found this weird sketch on the back, uh, signed by the, 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 the artist. And, um, 100, 150, 200 bucks for these things. This is a little bit damaged from sitting in this, being smushed in the storage box, but I think I can get, even if I get a hundred bucks, it's amazing. And there's more of these $50 items. It's again, it's these 25, 50, $75 items that really add up. And there's just so many in these boxes. And uh, it's so much part of the, the treasure hunt. And this is what the chaos looks like during the day before it's completely organized. Then at the end of the day, this is what my truck looks like. Two full pallets of stuff back there. This is all pre-sorted stuff. I do one more sorting uh, to even specify things even further. But anything that goes in the truck comes home with me to uh, figure out where it's going to be sold. And it's off to an adventure into my little tiny 600-foot apartment. And there's just not enough room for, for all this stuff. So I have to kind of do it in uh, many different trips and, and start to really sell it. And this is the, the chaos inside the apartment after auction days. These tubs, I have roughly 15-ish tubs, 15 to 20 of these. And this is all, again, this is pre-sorted. A lot of this stuff is going to end up on eBay and Amazon. I figured we'd go through to kind of get an average value, knowing that I have roughly 15 of these tubs. Let's see what's in these three. Let's look at it together. And we'll take an average and then we'll do some math and base it on, say, 15 tubs just to see kind of where we're at. You'll see the gross sales average at $150 at the bottom. That'd be a running total. These are gross sales as we do this together. And a lot of this stuff is just, you'll see, it's completely random. Here's some Ford motor parts. You'll see stuff. These are general merchandise. You'll see stuff from every category on eBay. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what most of this stuff is until I learn about new stuff out there in the market all the time. This is like called a Hossie Poo Poo bear doll and Hossie Poo Poo in my pants when I see that they're worth $100. I had three of them in here. So just really random stuff that puts money in my iced coffee budget. Again, more Ford Motorcraft parts. I bought, I found a bunch of these. I'm going to lot them up. I probably have 10 or 15, 20 of those. I really don't know the value. Some of this stuff I'm just showing to give you an example of what's in here. There's a lot of this jewelry and pins and buttons. Anything really nice like these, these pretty buttons, uh, they're pretty pins. I'm going to be selling those on whatnot. All this other jewelry 
Uh, I end up putting it in a flea market, sell for 25 cents, 50 cents, somewhere in the like, or, or sometimes it's, it's like a handful for, for a dollar or so. But I'm going to start selling more on whatnot, anything in the nerd world. And I'll talk more about that in a minute as you'll see another toy going straight to whatnot. Uh, I'm really new to whatnot. I don't know if you guys are, are whatnot sellers at all, but uh, I definitely want to take advantage because I get so much stuff that's in the, the one to ten dollar range of toys that I think would do better on whatnot than than uh, necessarily in the flea market. I found this really cool Bennington, Vermont, this really nice pottery bowl and it sells for 60 bucks, just random, really cool. Uh, that was used, this particular thing is used, this boss pedal, but um, it sold really fast. It sold within a couple of hours of listing it. And a lot of this stuff is new. I'd say 90% plus of this stuff is brand new. Keep in mind, a lot of it is stuff that people are already buying online and it just gets lost in the mail and ends up in these pallets. And that's what, that's what we're all bidding on. So most of it is actually brand new stuff, which is really cool where, you know, if you go out to the wilds of thrift stores and estate sales, oftentimes you're, you're mostly buying uh, used stuff and there's obviously real value in that stuff as well but most of this happens to be new which drives the value and you can get uh, a few more bucks for this stuff and again it's just more random stuff this is a manscape um toiletry bag it sells for 20 bucks and that's where a lot of the money these these 15 20 dollar items this is what the majority of the stuff is and you're making your your money back five ten fifteen dollars at a time but all in when you're getting a hundred to two hundred different items out of a particular palette. I found three of these Pokemon Japan import cards. They're selling for like 65 bucks each. But uh, back to what I was saying, there's roughly 150, 200 items. And if you're buying a box for say 500 items, you're really only paying 200 or sorry, you're only paying like two dollars and fifty cents to five dollars. Uh, per item, whether it's a Pokemon box of cards that's worth 65 or a, a, a box of razor blades for 20 bucks, it's the same cost of, of these items. So, uh, just completely awesome, really fun treasure hunt. Again, residential pool kit. You're just seeing the best of the best here. A true, uh, smattering of an example. These things, these were, uh, about, like I say, $50 and there's roughly 30 of them, which added up a lot to like $1,800 worth. So, um, really cool finds. And again, this is all stuff. Every time I find something in here, it's, it's increasing the, the Rolodex, the, the information that I have. So when I am out in the wilds, I, I know what to look for on those thrift store and garage store shelves. This thing's going to whatnot. This spawn character only sells for about 15 bucks on eBay, but I think it'll be pretty popular on whatnot. So I'm waiting until I have two or three boxes on whatnot to, to try to give that a shot. But I know it's been really valuable to a lot of resellers, especially ones that I see on YouTube. So I definitely want to get into whatnot. I don't know what this is. I don't know what most of the stuff I sell. All I know is that it seems to be worth money and that's cool with me. Don't need to know what it is. Uh, just like I don't need to know about if my dog is necessarily licking what staying off the floor i'd rather he not but don't tell me what it is because it's probably something really gross so i'd rather not know computer parts uh, just so many things from so many different uh categories and it's so cool so that third bucket that's obviously an outlier those things eighteen hundred dollars i'm going to actually remove that from this total just for math purposes and let's just call it two thousand dollars between the three buckets which gives us an average of about six hundred and sixty seven dollars per box and let's say there's 15 plastic totes so let's pause while i do the calculation <laughs> 667 times 15 is going to be just about 10,001. So that's obviously wonderful if the plastic totes alone have almost 10,000 or a little over $10,000 in gross sales. And we still have two full pallets on the truck full of stuff. And knowing that just based on my experience of the past, I do think we're going to end up in the 15,000 to $17,500 gross sale range on this $5,000 purchase of these pallets. But obviously do keep in mind that's just gross sales. There's shipping fees and selling fees and all the various fees and taxes that I will have to pay for next year on some of this stuff, I'm looking at maybe a six to $7,500 
profit. And anyway, back to your regular scheduled programming. So this stuff here is stuff that ends up going to be uh, sold at flea markets and garage sales by myself, or sometimes it ends up at a consignment store. And there's nothing wrong with this stuff. It's actually really nice new stuff. As you can see, it just doesn't fit the bill for online selling for a variety of reasons. Like this tool set here, it's very heavy and it sells for $35 ish on eBay all in uh, shipping on this stuff plus fees. That's going to only leave me with about $5 if I sell this online and it's a little bit bulky. It's just easier to sell at a flea market or garage sale where I think I can get closer to seven to ten dollars on that. And that's how a lot of this stuff is. There's there's just candles worth five to ten dollars. Uh, just a variety of, of really random stuff that doesn't seem to sell well on eBay, but we're certainly make a few bucks in flea markets. This box here, we're looking at about a thousand dollars just in this these few items here. I put these aside as they they popped up uh, during during the day, but this. Belova, Belova, Belogi, Belagna sandwich uh, watch sells for over $200. And this invisible floating pen, again, just random stuff. I've never seen this before. Pretty cool, 75 bucks. But the highlight of this particular box, uh, these NFT version pop figures, I had no idea they were worth so much, but they're 100 to $150 each, which is crazy. There's, there's some denting in the box. So I'm gonna auction these individually on eBay. Let the people decide their value, really popular. But I think we're looking at 800 to a thousand dollars just in this little box alone that could pay for for up to two pallets which is really exciting so you can see how this stuff is very exciting this is unveiling of the pallets that are full on the back of my truck and i still have to go through all this and uh these these awesome boots ski boots i think i can get like 250 it's off season it's in the middle of summer so i'll probably wait and maybe i can get like 300 as it gets uh closer to to the the winter season i found three of these uh like hair removal systems that's 170 bucks each this pan 155 this ink cartridge 100 or sorry 85 bucks and i'm just flying through some of this to, to show you guys some examples of stuff but i found three of those 170 dollars each this shark uh, another 170 dollars these things you know three of these are paying for for the box for pal alone this this canon 200 plus dollars this printer uh, this was a really cool score. This, I don't know what it is. Again, more stuff I don't know what it is, but brand new, it's selling for $850. I think I can get like 600 bucks because this is missing the box and cords, but that's gonna pay for a whole pallet. These cool shoes, $250 shoes, all these other shoes, a whole stack of shoes here awesome stuff and you can see the value really adds up in the stuff so i think we did really well today i do this like once a month so uh, let me know if you guys like this this kind of content thanks for hanging out and see you guys out in the wild